worms. I'm going to start with the three phyla that worms fall into, platyhelminthes, nematoda, and annelida. They're actually kind of easy to remember. I know you're going, well, what do you mean? How, how am I going to remember what goes into what? Okay, platyhelminthes, if we split that word right here, platy means flat, helminthes means worm. They are from the Greek, so if you're keeping your, your list up, you can throw those both in the Greek and go from there. Plat and flat are very much the same, you know, do that, now we got flatworm. You ought to be able to remember platy, helminthes, flat worm, right? Nematoda is Greek and it means thread-like. We already did nematocysts, thread sac, right? When we were talking about um, uh, Nidaria. But nematoda, same thing, thread-like. The way I remember those, does platy helminthes have an O in it? Nope. Does Annelida have an O in it? Nope. What's the only one that has an O in it? Nematoda. These are also known as your round worms. Okay? These are round worms. And I remember it because there's a big round letter right there. Okay? Nematoda, round worms. Annelida. It's Latin for little ring. All right, these are your segmented worms. And the way I remember that is a little different. I think of things that are annual. It's not quite the same, but it's kind of in there, right? Annual, they happen every year. They happen year after year after year. A segmented worm would be like your earthworms. And you guys have all looked at those and they have a little little rings throughout, right? And their bodies, okay? Questions thus far, we good? Okay. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna erase nematoda and analita for right now. And we're just gonna focus on platyhelminthes until we get those done, okay? This is about what we're looking at for notes. It's not, not like terrible, not like huge. Um, and I write kinda, I kinda jam things in. We'll expand upon it. All right, can I get rid of nematoda and annelida? We got those? Okay. So we're going to work with just platy helminthes for right now. We'll come back to nematoda in a little bit. Platy helminthes. They are solid bodied animals. And they have no coelom. Now we haven't talked about a coelom yet. Because we haven't had any yet that have had, had that. Okay. A coelom is a hollow fluid filled cavity. To between the body wall and the gut, well, the gut wall, I'm just going to put the guts. Okay, we are coelomates, humans are coelomates. We have, we're, we're hollow, okay? We are filled with organs, right? But they're not just attached to the inner part of the muscle of our, our abdomen. All right, they are, there, there is fluid in there. If you have a laparoscopic surgery, they make a little, a little hole in your side or down, you know, lower, and they pump you full of carbon dioxide, and what that does is it blows that, that area up so they can get to your, your organs and things, okay? If we were non coelomates they couldn't do that to us. You can't do that to a flatworm. They, they just, they're, they're, solid throughout. The organs are in their muscle and it's just all one like ribbon of, of stuff, okay? What is this good for? Well, it is protective, mainly due to cushioning. But I put protective and cushions, all right? You ever uh, been running along, you fell forward and knocked the wind out of yourself and it kind of was not a fun couple minutes till you got your, your wind back. 
okay? That, you know, your, your lungs, you knock the wind out of your lungs, but thankfully you had a coelom, it protected your organs, okay? Fluid filled, so it's, it's stuff's just kind of, it's all attached in places, right? It's not like your organs are just free floating inside you, but they're, they're off of your, your stomach essentially, okay? The inside of your abdomen. Right. They are dorsoventrally compressed. Now that's a word, a new word for us, dorsoventrally. If I'm a shark, what's the what's the fin on my back called? The dorsal fin, okay? Here's the deal, on an animal, and we haven't really gotten to this yet, I'm gonna draw a fish, very simple fish first, okay? The top part of the animal, or it's what would be the back, is the dorsal surface, okay? The bottom is the ventral surface. Uh, ventral, usually, if it's got an anus, it's going to be on the ventral surface. Why? Because they're venting stuff out of that. That's how I remember it. Okay. So dorsal, you always think of, of jaws with the dorsal fin, right? Dorsal is the back, ventral is the, the tummy, essentially. These things have taken this and gone like this. So now we have an animal that is very much like this if we look at it from the side, but from the top. Side view, top view, it might look like that. All we've done is we've taken its back and its stomach, or its abdomen, its belly part, and just mashed it flat, okay? And again, it's just, it's solid in there. There's no coelom. It's, 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 it's like if you put pieces of, you took nerds candy, and that's the, the, the organs, and you just had them somehow inside of a, a gummy bear. Okay, or a gummy worm probably is what I should use, right? But it's okay. okay any questions on that? Dors dorsal ventrally compressed, compressed. Okay. Now, how do they reproduce? Well, they can go a couple different ways. All right. So they are sexual or asexual. And they are hermaphrodites. That's another new word, uh, at least in this class. We haven't covered it yet. What is hermaphrodite? And it's okay if you don't know, guys. It's, 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 some of you are like, uh, should I know this? Do I not know this? Hermaphrodite means it is uh, both male and female at the same time. It has male reproductive organs and female reproductive organs in the same animal, okay? Now, something else that I'm gonna show you because a lot of times this is how I shorthand it. Male and female, those are the male and female symbols, all right? Uh, my dad was a biology teacher for a lot of years. He still dabbles in chickens and uh, peacocks and pigeons and things sometimes, he breeds them. And a lot of times, you know, if he's keeping records of what he's got, the males are always the Volvo symbol. Guess where Volvo got it, it's, it's the male symbol. Or the females are this, okay? How do I remember them? Um, the male symbol has a little pointy up thing. That's as far as I'm gonna get into that, okay? The female, to me, looks like a mother with her arms out, I'm gonna give you a hug or is, you know, cradling a baby or something, okay? So that's, that's how I remember them. Let's see, I think it's actually like Mars and Venus symbols um, is what those actually are, but anyway. So if I, if I just jot this, I'm talking male. So make sure you kind of know those because a lot of times that's, that's the way I'll do it. I do a lot of shorthand stuff because I'm lazy, okay?
Now, other ones like planaria, that guy that I just had there, uh, planaria. Planaria is a certain type of flatworm. They, um, they can just regenerate. And they're really good at it. Okay, so if I'm a flatworm, if I'm a planarian, And I've got my little weird eye spots. They have little eye spots. They look cross-eyed. They're kind of cute little guys, okay? You see them under a microscope. Um, if I cut one like this, they will heal, and I will now have two of them, okay? Yeah. These guys, okay, we were talking about that's That's a good point. We were talking about how starfish are like super good at regeneration. These guys might have them beat, okay? With a starfish, if I have my star, as long as I've got a little bit of that central disc part, the whole thing, it, it'll regenerate no problem. That, that leg will become a whole new animal. This thing, if we cut it here, or here, or here, or here, or here, or here, right through its eyes even, Right now, the way I've got that uh, divided, we'd get 14 different animals out of that, and it would do it, okay? It does not need much to regenerate. It'll regenerate the entire animal. It takes a little while, all right? It's really odd because somehow this little tail piece, which is a long way from the eyes, will go ahead and it'll start kind of healing that part. It'll start to kind of put on a head part and after a while, it will develop eye spots. They're, they're bizarre animals, okay? Uh, it, it's worm. It's a lowly, lowly animal, right? Super duper good at regeneration. Yeah. The limb will regrow a starfish, um, but the, the most, let's, let's look at it this way. If I cut this animal into five pieces, I'll get five new animals. Right, because each one of those will regrow. Okay, I've cut this thing into tiny, tiny chunks, almost like you know, if you were to throw it through a wood chipper, if you had a wood chipper that small. Okay, just about every one of those chunks would regenerate. I'm not kidding. These things, these guys are are probably number two in the world for regeneration. These guys are more than likely number one, and it's really not even that close of a contest. They're crazy. They're crazy cool. Okay. Um, let's see, these guys have, they have a brain, have a brain and eye spots. Now some of the animals we talked about already have eye spots, but they're super duper simple and I didn't really even, you know, mention them because it's just essentially, it, it's so simple. These guys, you can actually tell they've got eyes, right? They can't move them in their sockets like we do. And it's more for, you know, shadows passing over them. I better hide, that type of thing. But they did have a brain. This is the first animal we've talked about that has a brain. It's a very simple brain, okay? But it does have essentially a nerve ganglion that has concentrated in the head end. They also have essentially what's like a ladder um, nervous system. Okay, it kind of does that. They don't have a single, we have a single part to our nervous system, right? It goes down our back. These guys have like a ladder that runs through them of nerves, okay? But they do have a brain. So if I ask you, you know, what's the first animal that we talked about that has a brain? It would be these guys. The lowly worm, the first animal that we've hit that has a brain. They have a single orifice. Oh, that kind of sucks, okay? So they have no anus. These guys have kind of right about here in the body, they've got a little thing, a little opening, and it puts out, essentially the, it can stick out, and that's how they eat dead fish or whatever they're eating. And then they've still got to digest it, and it's got to come back out that same hole, okay? They don't have an anus. The other ones we talked about, they're, they're a little more, okay? There's no anus on those guys. Planaria are, are one of the most famous ones of these, but you guys may have never heard of them, and that's fine until today. No worries, 
okay? You can go down, um, if we went down the hill to the, the little creek there, we'd probably find planaria, okay? They're, they're aquatic, they, these types of, of conditions, they love it, they're fine. Uh, if we went and got some, some pond water, we'd probably see some if we looked under a microscope. All right, um, so these guys are, are kind of cool, but probably the most famous form of flatworms, Lord, shut up and write, tapeworm. Tapeworms are probably the most famous type of flatworms. And I'm sure you've all heard of tapeworms. We've all heard the stories of tapeworms, right? Tapeworms are pretty cool. They are parasitic, of course. They are parasitic. They are all hermaphroditic. And which is really odd. Usually with hermaphroditic animals, you still need two animals. They want to, you know, combine their DNA to get, you know, better, newer, hybridized DNA. These guys can just go ahead and fertilize themselves. Okay, most hermaphrodites don't do this. Most hermaphrodites still find another hermaphrodite, right? One of them plays the daddy, one of them plays the mommy, okay? They go ahead, well, they both do both simultaneously, usually, okay? But they both essentially get each other pregnant. These guys just do it themselves, okay? They're, they're, they're weird. Their head is called a scolex. And it looks a little something like this. Okay, where the little black things, the hair looking things are hooks. Here's his mouth. Again, no anus. So it gets in, it hooks in, it, uh, draws nutrients out of your guts, and then it goes ahead and kicks its waste back into your guts. It's, it's not a good thing to have, okay? They have a really tiny little neck, and then they start to swell out, and they are very flat. Each one of these things that I'm now drawing, each one of these, these pieces is full of eggs. They're really tough eggs. They will survive, you know, your digestive system, your digestive tract long enough to get out of your body, get picked up usually by another animal and start it all over. These pieces that come off of here, because they will, they'll just pop off. That's called a proglottid. P-R-O-G-L-O-T-T-I-D, proglottid. I used to work for a vet when I was about 16. I was about your age my first job. I thought I wanted to be a veterinarian. And I did for a while. Um, but we had a puppy come in one time that they thought he had worms. He just, he was not getting any bigger, right? He, he didn't, didn't look good. You know, his, his color was kind of off and whatnot. Well, so we let him go outside. We let him go to the bathroom and then we looked at his poop. Okay. He was kicking proglottids out in his feces. So what we did was we looked at his poop and we looked for little things that looked like rice that were moving, okay? They weren't maggots, they were these pro proglottids. There is muscle in there, they actually contract, and they look like rice, but they look like moving right. It's, and he had a lot of them. There was a lot of white on his, on his uh, stool, so pretty gross. Um, but they actually used to use these in the 1900s, early 19, like 1900, 1920. These were diet pills. Say what? Yeah, uh, they took a bunch of, of uh, tapeworm eggs, put them in a pill, and the gals, to watch their figure, would go ahead and just, you know, down them like medicine, okay? They'd hatch them out inside, and yeah, you can eat what you want because a lot of your nutrients are going to Mr. Worm here. Well, Mr. and Mrs., it's, it's the same. It's, it's both sexes at the same time, right? That's where your nutrients were going. You could eat more and still lose weight, okay? Um, in the world, there are probably more than likely you guys have a couple of what we talk about today in your body, 
okay? It, it's gross, I know, but it's okay. If we lived in like a third world country where we didn't have, you know, clean water and, and clean, you know, meat and stuff, and we didn't have refrigeration, we didn't know how to cook things right, we'd have a lot more of these, okay? We can live with them in us. There comes a time, though, where there's just too many of them, and it, it makes you sick. Um, okay, so like I say, they attach to the inside of your intestine. Um, they have a very complex life cycle. They have different hosts. It's not like these eggs will go ahead and hatch out inside you. It's got to go to something else. Um, something else picks it up, eats it, runs it through. That helps to kind of digest the coating on the eggs. They hatch, you eat them, you know, or, or you know, pick them up through whatever contact. Okay. Uh, now, how big can these guys get? The biggest one I could find on the internet was 80 feet. 80 feet long. They can get over 30 feet in the human digestive tract. Okay, they just, they usually go in, they make an incision in your gut, and they start pulling. And they've got to do it kind of slowly, because if they do it too fast, they're going to knock these off, and these proglottids, you're still going to have some issues, right? You don't want to tear the head off because if you do that, that's fine. It'll just go ahead and regenerate the rest of it before too long. You got to get the entire animal. You got to do it slow. They usually kind of wind them up like a kite string as they go. And these things, they just keep coming out. And they just keep coming out. And now you've got six feet of it out and you're still going. And you might have another 10 feet of it left or more. Okay, they're, they're horrendous things. They can actually live up to 30 years. <laughs> Something I forgot to tell you with worms, again, when did they first show up on the, the planet? Oh, about half a billion years ago. So far, all the animals have, have appeared about half a billion years ago. Problem with worms is they don't fossilize real, real well. So they may have been around a lot longer than that, but you know, try to find a, a fossil of, a, of an earthworm. The best thing you can usually do is the tube that it lived in, right? Because not much of it actually fossilizes. These guys, a lot of them are very, very small. You're not going to see fossils of them. So, yeah, it, it, they could have been around a lot longer than that. But like pretty much everything else, there was a whole bunch of stuff happening. And again, half a billion years. There could be 200 million years difference in there, and it, it's, it's still a long time ago. Yeah. What was the host of the what, sir? Oh, I don't remember what it was in. Um, I, I don't remember if it said. I was trying to just find, you know, how big can tapeworms get? I know, you know, roughly 30 feet in a human, because after that, there's just, they've plugged you up too much. They'll wrap back and forth, back and forth, back and forth inside, okay? Um, I'm not sure what the host was. It'd probably be something larger than we are, I would hope. Otherwise, that person was in some pain and probably wasn't moving food through very well anymore because it was they were just full of worm. So I don't know if that was like, you know, pulled that out of an elephant. I don't know. That's that's big. <laughs> this room I think is about 25 feet long. So it'd be like down and back and down. Yeah, plus a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so any any questions on flatworms? Lovely animals, right? They are just dandy, dandy animals. Let's move on to uh, nematodes. And let me just, just warn you, they're no better. <laughs> they're, they're even grosser in some ways. <laughs> Love worms. Nematode, good old nematodes. If you were to go out and dig up a big chunk of dirt most of the animal life you're going to find in there is going to be nematodes. Now, they're not going to bother you. They're microscopic. They're teeny tiny little things. You won't even know they're there, okay? You don't see them. You don't realize that, that they're, they're pretty prevalent. Okay, these have no coelom. But they do have an anus. So they have a complete digestive system, okay? So it goes in one end of the worm, it comes out the other end of the worm. Okay, so that's kind of a big step evolutionarily. 
These guys are in every ecosystem. You can find them anywhere on the planet. Every ecosystem, tundra, even, they're, they're, they're there. Most of them are, make sure I spell that right. Yeah. Most of them are dioecious, okay? What's dioecious? Now you're throwing another word at us, okay? Dioecious means there are separate, separate male and female, okay? Hermaphrodite is the opposite of dioecious. Okay, humans are dioecious. Okay, we are separate male or female. Okay. As a rule, all right, I'm not saying that hermaphroditic humans can't be born because it does happen sometimes. Things happen. Over nine months of being carried, sometimes things turn on and turn off at weird times. They don't do exactly what they're supposed to. But as a rule, we're either male or female sexually that's those those the, the the parts the hormones etc that we make but some are hermaphrodites okay most most are either male or female but some are both okay um if you haven't noticed with zoology and the different phyla a lot of times it's like this is the rule and here's the exception and you know Worms are no different. It, it's, this is the way most of them are in this phylum. They're all related enough to be in the same phylum, which doesn't even mean they're terribly closely related. But there's always that one weirdo that's going to be different than everybody else. Okay. Uh, they are usually usually sexual reproduction. Okay, but again, not always. Now, several of them, like I said, several of them won't bother you at all, but several of them and the ones that we're gonna kind of worry about are parasites. Several of them are parasitic and they can cause a lot of trouble up to and including death in humans, in dogs. Dogs are bad about this. Heartworms are nematodes. I mean, you guys have ever had to, you've got dogs, you've had to treat them for heartworms, or you treat them once a month for heartworms, or you had to take them in, do the blood test for heartworms, okay? Heartworms, nematodes. Uh, they can also, uh, the ones that we mainly work worry about are the ones that get into your intestines. And again, in humans, they will do this, okay? What they do essentially is they just, they, they plug them up Okay, with a heartworm, with a dog, I have seen the, the, the hearts that they've taken out and, and dissected, and they are 100% full of worms. There are worms spilling out of the aorta, out of the vena cava. Okay, they are coming out of the heart even before they cut into the heart. All right, that means you can't pump. You can't pump any blood. The volume's all taken up by worms. You can't move it. It's, it's, it's a bad thing. Heartworms and dogs are terrible. Okay. They can also, okay, they're parasitic, and we haven't really talked about this, but some of them can parasitize plants. Some of them are parasitic to plants. Kind of weird, right? But they, they do. We had not talked about that much. We talked about things being parasitic to other animals so far, but not so much with plants. They have a collagenous cuticle. Okay, what's that mean? Well, it's it's outside of their skin. Okay, they have like a like a, this layer of armor. Okay, it is very tough and it resists drying out. Just uh, drying out, and it resists digestion by the host's uh, uh, 
gastrointestinal tract, okay? You don't digest it. Your stomach acid will digest just about everything, okay? Um, you, you can, I don't do this, all right? But you can, you can eat metal and it would, your, your hydrochloric acid in your stomach would break a lot of it down, okay? It would corrode a lot of it. Don't do it, don't try that at home, okay? Thing is though, it will not chew through this, okay? Your stomach acid is a very, very strong acid, okay? Hydrochloric acid, very strong. Uh, it's probably pH of about between two and three in your stomach. It's nasty, okay? When you vomit and it burns, it's because you're digesting your esophagus and your mouth. The stuff is, is nasty. You don't want to spill it on you, right? Um, and it's, it's a, a lower pH, meaning it's stronger acid than a lot of what you can buy on the shelf at any store. Um, so it's kind of bad. But yeah, the, it, it, once they get in you, you don't digest them like you would a lot of other things. Some parasites, it's no big deal. You, you, you eat them, <laughs> you digest them, and they're, they're done. These guys, not so much. Um, the eggs are the same way. Eggs are extremely tough. They don't digest, they don't dry out. Even if they do dry out, it does not matter. They will go dormant for years, okay? These guys can get up to about three feet, which doesn't sound very long, but if you've ever seen a round worm, that is more than enough, okay? A lot of your thread worms, whip worms, hook worms, things like that, they're very small, they're very, you know, they, they just kind of, you know, they kind of look like that. But if you've got like an Ascaris, it's a pretty nasty looking worm and a three footer, that one's only about two. They don't get quite that fat, but you know, that's kind of the general shape. We used to di uh, dissect those when I was your age um, in high school and we were always extremely careful, all right? Because I said, if it's got eggs, and a lot of them did, they're very tough. Even though these things were in formaldehyde, we used to use formaldehyde back before we realized it caused cancer. We had these guys soaked in formaldehyde. If we were dissecting them, and they're really not much to see, it's a tube inside a tube. It's, it's kind of a crappy digestion or uh, dissection. But you know, you cut them open, and you had to be very careful not to accidentally nick your finger while you're doing so. Because if those eggs, which are microscopic, got into your bloodstream, even though they've been soaking in formaldehyde for years, they could still, once they get into you. Those eggs go ahead and hatch. Now you got you got intestinal roundworms. Yeah, they are they are very well suited. They're very they're very tough animals. They're not necessarily adaptable, but they can they can go. You know, we always talk about how cockroaches would survive a nuclear you know war. These guys would be there too, probably inside the cockroaches as parasites. Okay. Any questions on nematodes? They're, they're just as nasty as, as flatworms in a lot of ways. But again, a lot of them are harmless. A lot of ones, you come in contact with them all the time, they're harmless. But you eat something that's not cooked well enough or whatnot, some kind of meat, welcome to uh, Roundworm City. Okay, so we're gonna move on to Annelita. We're almost done, we're two thirds of the way done with the notes, so we're doing good. I know it's very note heavy today. That's kind of the way it sometimes goes. But I want to get all the worms covered kind of at the same time so you can compare and contrast. And Alita, these guys are a little friendlier for the most part. Okay, earthworms are analids. All right, we love earthworms, they're cool. Uh, you might be like, ew, they're gross, they're slimy. Yeah, they are. And they're kind of bristly. You ever felt the bristles? Okay, there's, sometimes they're very bristly little guys. Uh, those bristles help them to move, you know, through the dirt and whatnot. Um, but then, the other thing that's in here are leeches, and they are not as friendly. They're pretty cool though, okay? I've actually, I've seen people that have them as pets, and how do you feed your, your leech? Every couple months, you just put your arm in the tank, you let them come over, you let them stick to you, they bite you, they suck your blood, they swell up like ticks, okay? And then they pop off and kind of go crawl away and essentially just kind of go into a food coma for days, okay? The only real problem is when they go ahead and relieve themselves because it's, it's 
pure blood that they've been sucking from you, their waste looks a lot like that too. It clouds the water. It's pretty gross. You got to have decent filtration, but you can't have real good filtration because you'll suck the worm, the leech into it. And, and you know, that's, that's not good. You don't want your worm to go through your filter. Okay. These guys are coelomate. And they have a coelom. Okay. And they're the first ones. It's a tube inside a tube with some fluid in between the tubes. Okay. They're coelomate and they have an anus. Yay. Okay, again, that's, that's a big evolutionary step. I know you guys are like, why are you so fixated on that, right? It, but it, it's a big thing, okay? Um, it's kind of funny too. I appreciate you guys not all giggling the first time I said that. I taught Earth and Space Science for a couple of years and I always dreaded the day that we were going to talk about Uranus because I knew I was going to get some little giggles and Problem is, once they start getting one, I'd do the same. So I'm still a five year old at heart. All right, these guys are also in every ecosystem. Now, I'm not saying earthworms are in every ecosystem, but some kind of annelid is. Okay, there's a lot of different types of worms. Um, from that video that you guys watched about the annelids, you remember the one that had all the, it looked very feathery. It was very weird. Closely related to, a, to an earthworm. A lowly earthworm you go fishing with, but these things were, you know, this long and had these, these different gills and things sticking off them. They're pretty cool. All right. Some, some are asexual. Several are sexual. Reproducers. And most of those are hermaphrodites. Okay, earthworms are hermaphrodites. They're both male and female at the same time. Uh, when you catch them out in the summer or the spring and there's two of them that are like kind of stuck together, they're mating, okay? But again, one isn't the male and one's the female. They're both simultaneously male and female, okay? It's a very, it's a very um, economical way to do this, okay? It's a very efficient way to have sexual reproduction to be hermaphrodites, right? Okay? You don't have to go looking for your opposite. All you got to do is look for another earthworm because you all got the same parts, okay? It's, just, it's, it's not like, okay, I've, I've got to go to earthworm uh, uh, okay, Cupid, and I'm looking for a male earthworm. It's just like, hey, I'm looking for an earthworm. That's all I'm looking for, okay? Earthworms don't have high standards, okay? These guys do have bristles on earthworms, and we, we mentioned that. They have bristles, sometimes known as setae, S-E-T-A-E, okay? The bristles help them sense their environment, okay? They're like whiskers on a cat, but they also help them mainly if, if I'm in a tunnel and I can't really, you know, do this type of movement, Right, if I'm a, if it's a real tight tunnel, but I could probably do, do this type of movement with my CTA. Okay. Uh, have you guys ever seen tremors? Okay, the graboids. Uh, in some of the shots, if, especially once they've breached the earth, if you look, they have CTA on them. They've got bristles, great big, long, you know, thick. But it, yeah, not a documentary, but still a really fun movie. That's one of my favorites. Okay, these guys are omnivores. Earthworms are. Okay, well, what do you mean? I, do they eat meat? They don't eat anything that's rotting. Okay, anything that's, that's decomposed enough for them to get in their mouth, they'll eat it. Okay, so it's decomposing leaf litter. It could be decomposing animal, you know, parts. Anything organic, they'll they'll eat it. Um, and the, the earthworm castings, essentially their feces. Very good fertilizer, okay? They've broken stuff down really well, um, and there's, there's a lot of nutrient value in that. Um, the stuff that sells for pretty good money. Really, if you want a very interesting and kind of, not necessarily difficult job, be an earthworm farmer. There are people that do that, okay? They sell the poop. They make money for fertilizer by, you know, selling the poop. They sell the worms uh, for people, you know, 
Walmart gets them in, you know, in the tubs, and, and the Academy gets them in, in the tubs and stuff. It, it's a neat, it's kind of a neat job, all right? Earthworm farming. All right, so leeches. Talk a little bit about earthworms. We're going to talk about some leeches. These guys are, of course, parasites. They're blood parasites. They're little vampires. They are, you probably know them as aquatic, but they can also be terrestrial. Not the same exact ones, but there are land leeches. What they'll do is if I'm a piece of grass here, I'm a blade of grass, they will sit here and stretch themselves out. And if an animal walks by and brushes against that leaf, that little sucker's mouth grabs a hold of the animal and away it goes, okay? These guys, they live in the Amazon. It's, it's just one more thing to watch out for if you're ever in a rainforest, okay? It's land leeches, it's a, it's a real thing, guys. Um, and they're, they're not very big, you know, they're maybe an inch long or so, and they're black, you don't necessarily see them. And the cool thing is with leeches, you usually don't know they've bitten you, okay? They don't hurt when they bite. They've got, they've got a, a tripart mouthpiece, kind of like a graboid again, okay? They've got, they've got three and they just kind of get you and they slice, but then they pump you full of carotenin. Carotenin, which what that does, it's a, uh, this is an anticoagulant, which means your blood flows more freely. And it's also um, an anti uh, not antiseptic, anesthetic. I mean, you don't feel it. They're really slick at what they do. Okay, you don't know you've got them on you until you step out of the water and you've got them on you. Okay, and they can get pretty big. There, there are you know the, the the ones that live on like water buffaloes. There are giant Asian leeches that are nine to nine inches to a foot maybe even longer and they're huge animals and they're big thick yeah there, there are people you, you can do a little youtubing here once we're done go down that rabbit hole if you want to have nightmares there are people that have these giant leeches and they have giant leech feeding videos and it's like hey here's harry my and they'll, they'll stick their arm in there and he'll swim over and chomp and then sit there and pump blood for a while they take a while they're not super fast but this anticoagulant helps it to come through. Um, but they don't feel it. But when they're done, you've got a little scar. It looks like that because of the mouthpiece. So they bite you. Okay? Got three little hooks. That's, that's how you know you've been nailed by a leech. Plus, once they come off, you may bleed profusely. Why? Because the herudin is still, you know, their saliva. This is their saliva. Okay. And it still is, you know, your blood's going to flow a little bit more freely for a while. And you probably won't need like medical support unless you've been really ravaged by these guys. Um, I had one once try to bite me. I was on the Niobrara River in Nebraska in a canoe and just, you know, going down the river, had my foot hanging over the side of the canoe. It was a river, so the water was moving, you know, uh, and I felt something tickle my toe. And I pulled my foot up, and on my big toe, I had a leech. It was only, you know, yay long, about an inch and a half. But it freaked me. I never had to deal with that. I was in my 20s. I had never had a leech, right? So I did that, you know, tried to kick it off. Well, then I kicked the side of the, the canoe and ended up, like, bruising my heel. But I got rid of the leech, and it hadn't bitten me. Thankfully, I felt it. I didn't feel it bite. It hadn't bitten me yet, but I felt it tickling as it was sucking on. They have two suckers on them as well. So they've got like the head sucker, where the teeth are, okay? And they've also got a, a rear end that can act as a sucker. So they, can kind of, they, they can't bite you with their rear ends, but they can kind of stick to you, okay? And they are, they're segmented. You look at them close, they look like a big, fat um, earthworm in a lot of ways. 
Leeches are really, they're, they're kind of neat. Uh, you can go to like leech.com and actually buy leeches as pets. Uh, we use them still today. What did we used to use them for back in the dark ages? Bleeding, right? A lot of times if, if you were sick back in, in, in you know, medieval times, it was because of the vapors. There was something in the air, right? You'd gotten some bad vapors and they would they'd cut you and let you bleed. And that was to get the vapors out of your blood, okay? Medicinally, sometimes it does good things, okay? We still, to this day, you go to hospitals, you go down in the basement where they keep all the really cool stuff. They've got leeches down there, okay? They work really well for certain things. If you were to, if I were to cut my finger off, okay, accidentally, right? And I want it reattached. What they'll do, a lot of times they'll go ahead and sew it back. The problem is though, what have I done to all of the, the blood vessels in there? I've severed them. So I no longer have blood flow coming up into the finger. The finger will become necrotic and die, okay? But let's stick a leech on the end of there and let it suck blood. What's it doing? It's, it's creating a pull that's pulling blood up into the, the extremity. And when that one's full, let's toss another one on until I start getting you know, the right color, the right temperature, meaning I've, I've reestablished some of the blood flow into that extremity. We still do it today. Leeches, medicinal leeches are, are held in very high regard. We've been using them for hundreds of years for pretty much the same thing, okay? Uh, we also still use maggots for burn victims, okay? Maggots only eat dead flesh. Now maggots are not here, maggots are, are they're flies, they're arthropods, we're not there yet. But if, while we're talking about gross medicinal things that they can throw on you, you're a burn victim, you're gonna be happy to have maggots on you. Well, you might not be happy about it, but it's, it's gonna help you, okay? It's gonna eat the dead flesh before it rots. They will not eat your healthy flesh. And the cool thing about the medicinal maggots is they, they've dyed them pink, they are bright pink. So you know it's not just some maggot off the street that's on you, right? These are, these are sterilized, very clean, they're kept better than, than most people's house pets. I'm not kidding. These things are, are, are they're well fed. They're well taken care of. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did it help? Yeah. Or was it just really gross? <laughs> that's good. That's good. And that's. You know, do you want a, a leech on you? Not necessarily, but if it's going to be like, you know, if I can save my fingers or whatever, uh, yeah, well, let's let's do that. Okay. Um, what is the biggest annelid? We can get up to about about nine feet long. Not leeches. Okay. There are worms in the uh, I believe it's the Amazon. They're they're like Amazonian earthworms. They can get like nine feet long. Okay, your tables are about five. So put two of those tables together and that's what we're talking about, okay? Nice big worm, you can catch all kinds of stuff off of that. Groupers and things, you know, I don't know. Uh, these guys, annelids, if we're talking about earthworms, something else to mention is these guys have actual multiple hearts. Multi-hearts, they have several. Sometimes five, sometimes seven, okay? Cool thing about an earthworm is you can cut it, and as long as it, it, they're segmented, so it's all repeated throughout the body, a lot of times they'll heal, and they'll heal up okay, and you could get two earthworms out of it, okay? But if you guys ever go fishing, don't tear an earthworm in half, because you're like, I don't need an earthworm that long. Don't tear it in half, and then put half of it back in with the other worms. They release a hormone, a chemical, that will go ahead, and they'll all die. Okay, it's, it's not a good thing. And if, if you guys have ever been fishing, how many of you guys have ever done that? I mean, that and, and you didn't realize it, and the next time you go to go fishing, you open and it's like, whoa, man, those are, those are bad. We're not, we're not using those, right? Okay, yeah, don't, don't, uh, don't do that. Okay, so what do these guys have in common? Well, they do have nerves, right? We talk, we've been talking about what do things have. So these guys have nerves, they have muscles, obviously they move, okay? And again, these guys all have brains. Okay, well not, not, well yeah. I didn't mention it with the nematodes, didn't mention it with the annelids, but they all have brains at this point. Brains, nerves, 
if it, if it has a brain, it definitely has nerves because brains are just, you know, concentrations of nerves, muscles, etc. Okay. I think that's, uh, that's it on nerves. That's all you really kind of need to know for now. Okay. So I'm going to stop the Zoom.